Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Carl Lentz? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. A recent upload I made to Patreon is the case of the mostly harmless hiker. As far as the Carl Lentz case, I'll first look at the background, then move to my analysis. Carl Lentz was born in Virginia Beach, Virginia on November 6, 1978. In 1998, he enrolled at North Carolina State University, where he played basketball. He left college in 2000. Carl moved to Los Angeles and worked at a Gucci store on Rodeo Drive as a greeter. He studied at a seminary for some time. In the early 2000s, he traveled to Australia and attended a school operated by Hillsong Church. The church was founded in Australia in 1983 by a man named Brian Houston. It eventually became a megachurch. About 150,000 people attend services each week at 131 branches across 30 different countries. The church is also a multimedia company. It produces books, musical acts, and documentaries. Carl interned with Brian Houston, performing tasks like picking up his dry cleaning, and washing his car. Apparently, at the Hillside International Leadership College, a student can get credit for these tasks. So they're paying money to a college in order to run errands for church leaders. And at the end of this, they think that they deserve a college degree. Carl became good friends with Brian's son, Joel. Carl graduated from the college in 2003. In 2005, he returned to the United States. He became a youth pastor at a church in Virginia Beach. In 2010, a branch of the Hillsong Church called Hillsong NYC opened in New York City. Carl moved from Virginia Beach to New York City to run the church. Around this time, Carl became friends with Justin Bieber. The two were fairly close. Justin even lived with Carl and his family for a short time in 2014. They were photographed together in public places a few times. For example, at a recording studio in Beverly Hills, at a go-kart racetrack in Los Angeles, and drinking at a bar in New Zealand. Simply by associating with Justin Bieber, Carl became a celebrity himself. He appeared to really enjoy this newfound status. He frequently wore a Rolex watch, and he dressed in clothing he considered to be stylish, like ripped jeans, a low-cut t-shirt, and a leather jacket. Carl would hang out with people like Kourtney Kardashian, Oprah Winfrey, and Selena Gomez. Carl's massive popularity led to a tremendous increase in the size of the Hillsong NYC congregation. The church had to move to increasingly larger buildings, eventually meeting in a massive theater in Manhattan. Carl was not only in charge of the New York City branch, he was in charge of the new branches as they opened in New Jersey, Connecticut, and Massachusetts. In addition to the celebrity connection, the church grew because of its unusual marketing strategy. The services were kind of like a rock concert, a well-orchestrated show with a lot of flashing lights and loud music. The messages of the sermons were always positive. Over time, Carl became less active in the church. He would disappear from the church for several months. He was quite busy spending time with his celebrity friends. Everything would change for Carl on October 22, 2020. A staff member at the church in New York City found text messages on Carl's work computer. The messages were of an intimate nature and pointed to an affair Carl was having with a 34-year-old jewelry designer in Brooklyn. Later, his affair partner said that he introduced himself as a sports agent. The affair continued even after she discovered his real identity. On November 4, 2020, Brian Houston announced that Carl Lentz was terminated. In an email to church members, Brian wrote that there were leadership issues and breaches of trust, plus a recent revelation of moral failures. Carl posted on Instagram, indicating that he was unfaithful in his marriage, which was the most important relationship in his life. He said the failure was on him alone, and he accepted full responsibility. He wanted to begin a journey of building trust with his wife and working on himself. On November 19, Brian Houston told staff members and volunteers that the church had discovered more than one affair. In addition, Carl exhibited narcissistic behavior, 
was manipulative, mistreated people, and was constantly lying. After his humiliation and termination, Carl sold his house in Montclair, New Jersey for one and a half million dollars. He was able to escape New Jersey, something that many people who live there can only dream of. He moved to Manhattan Beach, California with his family. Reportedly, Tyler Perry paid the rent on a $4.3 million house so the family could live there. It was $16,000 a month. About six months later, Carl and his family moved to a $700,000 house in Florida. Carl changed his cell phone number and only gave a few friends the new number. It's like he was ready for a clean break from his previous life. At one point, Carl enrolled in a 28-day outpatient program designed to treat pastoral burnout. Based on Carl's behavior, I'm guessing that's when he spins the wheels on his BMW. Internal investigations into Carl's behavior at the church revealed a number of allegations, including wage and hour violations, conflicts of interest, discrimination, harassment, and sexual misconduct. Now moving to my analysis. Hillsong Church promotes what is referred to as prosperity gospel. Brian Houston learned about this after visiting the United States in 1989. When he returned to Australia, he incorporated this doctrine into his church. The central idea behind prosperity gospel is that if members of the church donate money, God will give them more money back. To explain why this arrangement is necessary, like why God simply wouldn't give the money directly to the church, it is framed as a matter of faith. People will be rewarded for believing that God will recognize them for supporting the church. In addition to promises of unending wealth, the church offers a culture that matches modern materialistic values. There's an emphasis on being attractive, relevant, hip, and cool. It is marketed as a place where important people would go to church. After Carl Lentz was exiled from Hillsong Church, many people came forward with additional stories about his undesirable actions. It would appear that his inappropriate behavior was not isolated to one or two incidents, but occurred myriad times over the course of years. Here are a few examples of the allegations made against Carl Lentz, which were uncovered as part of an internal investigation conducted by a law firm. Carl once allegedly yelled at his driver for breathing too loudly. He told the driver that he needed to be available 24-7 and never miss a call or text. The driver would sometimes have to wait outside nightclubs for three to five hours. Carl denied this allegation. A pastor who worked for Carl said that he called him to his house at 1.15 a.m. to make him set up a drum kit for his son's birthday party. Carl claimed to have no memory of that incident. Carl allegedly demanded that two people pick him up from the airport, one to drive him home, and the other to wait for his luggage. Carl admitted this was true, blaming it on church policy. Carl received frequent massages his wife described the massages as a bit strange. Text messages indicated that Carl received quotes on the cost of massages and, let's just say, other services. But it's not clear if he ever received these additional services. A nanny who worked for the Lentz family for seven years indicated that she had sex with Carl. On one night in 2016, Carl's wife, Laura, allegedly caught the nanny in the act and punched her in the face two or three times. Carl managed to gaslight his wife. He convinced her that she hadn't seen anything inappropriate. The nanny wanted to leave her job to get away from Carl. He allegedly told her, you think that you can get another job? You don't even have a college degree. I can understand based on Carl's educational experiences why he believed a college degree was necessary to be a nanny. After all, he received credits for running errands for church leaders. Carl initially denied having sex with the nanny, but later he admitted that he engaged in between 20 and 100 sexual acts with her. Carl bragged to the investigators saying that he was a very good liar who took deliberate steps to cover his indiscretions. When considering all this information about Hillsong Church and the allegations, here are my thoughts on a few items that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. When Carl became the pastor of the church in New York City, he was phenomenally successful in growing the congregation. He targeted young people, a group not traditionally known for attending church services, 
and managed to have long lines outside the church an hour before the service started. The services were like theater productions. There was a lot of noise, flashing lights, dramatic behaviors, but little substance. There was an emphasis on appearances, the idea being that if somebody looked healthy and was well-dressed, they would be favored by God. The church believed this strategy was superior for attracting superficial people. Carl's association with celebrities became a key part of his success as well, with some attendees referring to the church as the celebrity church. Item number two, the church was highly dependent on volunteers. They described the culture as intense. Sometimes they would work for more than 12 hours a day. They were treated like low-level workers and assigned tasks like cleaning and driving people to parties. They would not be invited to these parties themselves. They could only drive people. The volunteers were instructed as to how they should interact with Carl Lentz. They were told, don't talk to him, don't look at him, and don't be in his way. One could argue that Carl was encouraging people to serve him just because he was so great, while telling people that they were forging ahead in their own journey to greatness, like someday all this volunteer work would pay off. The volunteers would reap massive benefits from their free labor. Item number three, in addition to asking for volunteers, the church, of course, wanted donations. The money was used to pay the leaders of the church, to grow the church, and to hold the services. This results in the church having access to more people to ask about donating money. Essentially, as people gave the church money, they made the church a better vehicle to collect more money. It was like a vicious cycle that led to tremendous wealth and growth for the church. Item number four, Carl Lentz has been accused of being a hypocrite, as having values inconsistent with the church. But is this really the case? I think one could make an argument that Carl's behavior is the natural extension of the values of the church. It's a church built on appearances, free labor, and the absence of realism. Carl was a pioneer. He connected with the values and expanded the beliefs to the next level of shallowness. He preached a message that people wanted to hear, a message of narcissism, materialism, and optimism. Church members wanted to feel good about themselves. Being associated with Carl, even if they couldn't get close to him, made them feel special. I think to view Carl's behavior as an aberration is to release the church from responsibility. He was, in many ways, exactly what they wanted. His only problem was getting caught. Item number five, Carl didn't start off his career in an unusual way. He wasn't destined to be a bad pastor. Rather, he became swept up in the celebrity lifestyle and started to view himself as important. His narcissism became more pronounced. It was activated by all the attention he received. He falsely believed that the attention he received meant that he was special. He was doing something extraordinary. Carl's relationship with Justin Bieber gave him even more confidence. Carl believed that he could pretend to be a great pastor, just like Justin Bieber pretends to be a great singer. Carl started working less and less and increased his time engaging in recreational activities. He wanted to live the high life, to enjoy being a celebrity. On the rare occasions when he did run the service, he would not interact with the regular members of the congregation. Carl separated the regular members from the VIPs. He even had a reserved seating section for the VIPs. Carl's volunteers actively kept regular people away from him. Only the VIPs were allowed backstage, where they could attend a private upscale catered event with Carl. There was no personal interaction between Carl and the members of the congregation, except for those VIPs. He would simply run the service and continue on with his party lifestyle. Now moving to the final item, number six. This case underscores the critical importance of attractiveness and how, in more than one way, it dominates the human experience. It explains a lot of behavior. Many people who attended the Hillsong Church in New York City did so because they found Carl to be physically attractive. They would say things like, they wish they could just touch his clothing or be near him. I find it interesting that after the allegations, people look at Carl and see the same physical qualities, yet perceive someone who is creepy, bizarre, manipulative, and arrogant. Now his clothing is not fashionable. 
Now his mannerisms are those of a terrible person, but in reality he is presenting exactly the same way he always has. Only the perception has changed. People are looking at him through a more critical lens. They are willing to accept reality. Perhaps that lens should have been applied in the first place. Those are my thoughts on the case of Carl Lentz. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis on this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.